So it's day one of the National Farm Machinery Show. Just starting to walk around. The show's just opening up. Got to do some looking around and see the latest and greatest. So that's uh, it's definitely interesting. I don't know why you would need a lift like that to work on a sprayer, but it, it's it's definitely there. So I'm checking out the Unpreferred booth here, and they make a 200 gallon ATV sprayer. I mean, it's a pretty legit sprayer. It's a little bit different than what you're gonna find at your local like TSC or something. I don't know, for all the food plotters, this thing would put a hurting on a food plot pretty quick. Like, I'm pretty sure this is designed for more like really super muddy conditions where you absolutely need to spray and maybe your ATV is the only thing that's gonna float through it. Uh, you can cover a pretty decent amount of acres an hour. 30, 45, or 60 foot boom. It's like a walking beam suspension maybe. Pretty interesting. So here we have an undercover crop cedar. Basically a rolling harrow with a cedar in the front of it. So been considering something like this, more just the rolling harrow aspect of it, not so much the cedar. Over here would be more the style we would be going after to pull behind our vertical tillage tool. Maybe something like this one. Or this one back here with the packing wheel. I think that would really help finish off our vertical tillage tool. So if you've never heard of the Louisville National Farm Machinery Show, it's a very large indoor farm show. It takes place in the winter. It's at the Kentucky Exposition Center, so it's a very large facility. Uh, it's one of the bigger indoor shows. Uh, it's not Agritechnica big, but it's big. And they're real good across rough fields. Think, you think they'd let you take a spin in it? Yeah, I wouldn't mind taking down the track. Yeah. He would, he would. After watching you drive the Razor, I don't know. Ooh, that would probably be better on the dirt track, yeah. I'll take this one. Well, you going to get uh, some... Uh, sure. Oh, you want one? Fun? I mean, if they gave it to me, I'd take it. How's it going, guys? Good. Make it trust me, you it would be nice. Ooh, they even buffed it. Ooh, JCB skid steer. So, we're going to hop in it while no one's here. So, one thing about our skid steer, we have a cat uh, D model, 242D. Can't stand it. Not enough space inside. The controls are not very smooth. But our telehandler is smooth as butter. So, I am interested in a JCB when we replace that skid steer which will probably be in a year or two we shall see I like the side exit uh, the teleskid part would be awesome but even if we don't opt for the teleskid just a uh, I would like to try one of their skid steers if it's as smooth as our tail handler it would be pretty pretty awesome and the side exits nice a cab skid steer is great until you do something that disables your engine and your boom's stuck up in the air right here and the door doesn't open. Watched a neighbor back into a tree, punch a hole in the radiator with his boom up and he came out through the escape hatch. Something to think about. Yeah, maybe I'll put some on need some for my loader. I think we need some I think we need some for the gleaner. Gleaner? Some W's. Put some on the sassy massy. Ooh. <laughs> Might be more like practical on the combine or the four-wheel drive but yeah I like I, where your head's at. Your vision is just not there man. So I'm guessing that this 6410 has a new cab on it. That's what I'm guessing they're gonna tell us when we ask them. So this show is what I would call one of the national farm shows. Uh, you see a lot of the actual equipment manufacturers here not just dealers or dealer networks so uh, if you want to talk to someone about something to do with your piece of equipment, this is a good place to talk to a company representative. Quite a few of them here. 
So walking around, I bumped into Sam from Ag Leader. So Sam's been down to our place, helped us do a soybean population trial last last year. But Sam, I noticed you guys have, uh, well, I don't know what you're calling it, but it looks like individual, um, I don't even know how to describe it, individual nozzle control for sprayers. Is yeah, that, that what we got going on here? Absolutely. Uh, what we've got here today is Right Spot. This is our new nozzle by nozzle sprayer control system. It's uh, it's giving you that individual uh, nozzle auto swath, so you're eliminating all your overlap. Uh, you're able to control your pressure and your rate at the same time, so you can you can drive the sprayer how you want more comfortably and do a better job essentially. And and also turn compensation to make sure that you're getting an accurate rate on everything. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. I know Dad, he does most of our spraying and that's one thing he always preaches is when you're turning, you end up with a lot of overlap and that you end up with carryover and you end up with spots with no beans in them the next year. Yeah. Stuff like that. And right now with chemical prices as high as they are, it will not take long or many acres, I guess, to justify uh, something like this. Yeah, absolutely. You want to be uh, as efficient and, and as effective as possible with your chemicals. So does this uh, does this go through like an ISO, like a Raven rate controller, or, or what, what do you have to have on your sprayer to use yeah, this? Yeah, this is all proprietary Ag Leader. Um, okay. so, so this is going to run through the Ink Man 1200. It's super easy and simple to set up. Uh, that's that's the way the Ag Leader way really is just making it super easy um, to, to operate. So I think that's an advantage that this system has over some of the others on the market is just this user, this easy user interface. Yeah. Yep. So we've been running Ag Leader on our farm, uh, well, since the beginning. Um, <laughs> and that's one thing we've always liked about it. I've ran just about every other system there is and it just seems like the user interface on the Ag Leader has always been the simplest to get up and going. Uh, especially with just the steering side of things. But, I mean, this isn't a new concept. There has there are competitors, but it is nice to see something else coming to the market, especially with, for us, we're already Ag Leader equipped, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah, I think it'll be a good fit for a lot of people. Yep. Uh, so yeah, excited about it. All right, well, thanks for showing it to us, Sam. Hey, thank you, Brian. Here's the all new Massey. By all new, I mean the cab is new. I don't know if they're using this, a different engine. I think that part's the same, but the user interface on in this machine, the new 8S. It's very different. So check that on 8S in the Farm Progress Show. I uh, interviewed my buddy Derek Reeser on this tractor, so if you're interested, I can check that video out. But uh, you know, pretty neat to see Massey continuing to evolve and change things up. And I've had a lot of questions. I think Fent's going to eventually replace Massey first. I don't think that's the case. Notice there's not one yellow challenger here, but there's a lot of Masseys and there's a lot of fence here. So I don't think this is a new model. Now this is a customer machine. Pretty cool to see. I don't know a lot about Masseys. Uh, that wasn't dad's brand when I was growing up or back in the day but this thing looks really, really well restored. Very pretty tractor. Uh, I might have to get that one of So we're sitting in a Fent uh, 724. So we ordered recently a Fent 1038 and it's going to come with this control. So I'm just kind of sitting in it. I haven't got a lot of time. I've never ran a Fent tractor with this control. Our 1038s, which are basically Fents, our 1038 Challengers, they have the previous model armrest. So a lot less functionality up here. A lot, you can program all of this stuff, I do believe. So uh, it's going to be a learning curve, but I think once we get the hang of it, it will be pretty sweet. Now look at this. Well, apparently it doesn't go up. I thought it went up. Oh, there it goes. That's just cool. We don't need it, and we didn't order ours with it, but I kind of wish we did just to push it up. So, Dad used to sell Dixie Chopper lawnmowers. Dad had uh, originally seen Dixie Chopper lawnmowers here at the farm show, decided he liked them, started selling them as a hobby, then that turned into a motor mower sales business that my brother ran until recently. So if 
you're new to our channel, we actually just purchased a Porsche Avatar just like this one here. Pretty excited for it this year. But as of yet, I have no experience with it. Here's what she looks like. So stopping here at the Honey Bee booth, uh, Jeff is going to give us kind of a walkthrough on a Honey Bee header. Uh, Jeff, what sizes do these things come in? This is a 36 foot here. We okay. build them 25 up to 50 foot. Okay. So at the front here, starting here, we've got a dual knife drive. This is the same drive on all the sizes that we offer. Um, we've got a divider here. The knives come close together, but they do not overlap. Moving down the header. We've got two and a half inch spacing on every other bat. This is five inch spacing down here. This is going to help feed those shorter crops. Um, the cutter bars, you want to show them this. It has nine inches of flex. And it pivots on a pin back here, and there's an airbag. Here, you got to chew it up. So each strut has an airbag at the back here. And that's how you adjust how the cutter bar, how heavy it is and how light it is. So wetter, heavier ground conditions, you're going to make that cutter bar lighter, which you would add more air for. And um, dry so, conditions and when you want to flex more, you make it heavier on the ground. Okay, so do you have a, like a separate monitor in the cab controlling yep. your air? I'll okay. show you that here in a second. Everything's mechanical drive on the header. You're looking at the back of your knife drive here. This side runs your knife and your right hand draper. This side runs your feed drum, your center draper, and your left hand draper. Your single points gonna look just like your combine brand. This one's set up for a John Deere. And then you'll have two additional connections there. In the cab, this is your left hand and right hand sensor. If you wanna add air to make it a- So this would be in the cab, which is mounted out here yes, for this show. Okay. Yep. To make it lighter on the ground, you add air. Pressure on the header that lets air out. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, one thing I noticed, I guess, like coming around here to the front of the head, it looks like this ramp is really long. Is there any reason for that? Is that more for rock protection or is that just need that for the flex? Kind of nature of the flex. So to, okay. in, to get that nine inches, we got a transition area. On the transition area, that's where your flex is going. Not as steep, it's a little bit longer. Okay. But this reel, we design our own reel, and the way our reel arms are designed, you're going to keep a really good uh, hug to this transition area. Okay. So with this design, can you maintain like a constant reel to uh, cutter bar height without clipping off these? That's right. Yep. Okay. Okay. So anywhere in the range four and aft, you're going to be the same height off your cutter bar. Okay. So it can't flex up into the reel. Right. Okay. We kind of developed this knife system with a lot of edible bean growers, which is a very short crop and it's a hard feeding crop. And uh, they've had a lot of success with this. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's one thing just looking at it, I was curious about it. I figured there was a reason for it. I just wasn't sure. sure. Yeah. Yep. All right, Jeff. Well, I appreciate the walk around, man. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Your system is 5200. Not a lot of experience with versatile tractors, but Farman Mike, a fellow that works for Versatile, one of the uh, very first YouTubers I ever met. Super good guy. If you need any advice or help on a Versatile, he's the man. And he's got a pretty awesome YouTube channel, so check it out. So the farm show in Louisville is very large, like I say, multiple buildings. These are some of the older buildings, or as I affectionately call it, the broom closet. But there's still a lot of vendors over here. Uh, walk through here and see what we can find. Plot guys would love this. I got a cousin that would uh, absolutely love to have one of these. Which is weird because I thought I planted him a deer plot every year. Ooh, that's shiny. That is shiny. So shiny. Anyone have any store lock toolboxes? If we get to build a shop here soon, definitely something I'd be considering. So if you've watched my channel before, you know I've 
a pretty avid Mahindra rock soar enthusiast. So I had to stop over at the Mahindra booth. This is the first time I've seen the 2022 model rock soar. Here with Mike from Mahindra. How you guys doing? So Mike, what is different about this machine versus previous models? So one of the major changes that we had to make with the Roxer is in the front end. Um, we went ahead and went with this newer style, aggressive grill. Uh, I really like it. Um, dual headlight, hood's a little bit different, fenders are different, but everything from firewall back is pretty much the same. We still have our turbo diesel, four cylinder engine inside of it, manual five speed transmission with a manual transfer case. Uh, we offer it in two models now. We have the model that you see in front of us here with the cab, heating AC, and then we also have a, a model that we offer that's open station, no cab. You can get the windshield and wipers <laughs> like this model here. Uh, take a look inside, our rhino lining. Very aggressive, very nice, thick coating. We do that here in the States, in Auburn Hills, Michigan, still assembled there. Is that the same coating that was on the previous? Uh, it's very similar to the coating. They improved it. Okay. Um, okay. You know, in-house they spray it. The tubs are now coming, factory painted. Um, so they're UV resistance, better wear. Um, they're not gonna fade. Um, a lot of technology went into that. That's one of the changes they did with R&D. Um, you do have the offerings of the uh, different wheels and tires packages that you can get. We still have accessories. At this time, we aren't offering uh, a back row, you know, or a second row seat for it. Uh, but the off aftermarket world does make that. We're, we are in engineering development for that now. Um, overall, though, pretty much the same vehicle except for the front end. Okay. Uh, great product. Great product. Couldn't speak highly. I think customers are going to enjoy it. Yep. yep. All right, well, I appreciate you walking around. Always. Thank you. Thank you. So while I'm at the deer booth, I had to stop and check out a new 8R. So I haven't been in one since I came out with a massage seat, which I don't think I'm going to get to take advantage of right now. No, nope, it doesn't work right now. Other than that, the armrest appears to be the same as the previous R. Um, same basic controls, maybe shaped a little bit more round. I don't know. Everything else seems fairly similar. The pegs are pretty nice. Yep, that is, that's kind of handy. It's a little things. I mean, it would probably be better if I wasn't as tall, but it works. Sleek hood, good visibility. Big radio, big radio. So we demoed an 8400R uh, two years ago, three years ago. Fairly similar to the way this is laid out. Like I say, this one does have the new, uh, the new style, the new seat, mirrors, a little bit different decals. But we should probably get out of here. Stopping over at the case booth and uh, see this different planter here. This is a 2150, but it's a splitter planter. I don't think they've had that before. I've never seen one with a bar, two bar design like this. Seems a little different. Maybe a little cumbersome to work on that row unit because you got this bar in the way. Like, reach over. A little different, but I think this is the first time they've had a front folding splitter planter. It looks like the same row unit. I mean, they do have a heavy row unit. Seems to be built pretty well. The row unit itself. On our 2140, the only issues we had really had were openers. But this uses a different opener than the 2140, so maybe this will be a good plan. So walking through the precision planning booth, one thing that uh, caught my eye that I noticed was this new row cleaner setup. I'm here with Lucas from Precision Planning. So Lucas, what is the uh, what we got going on here? I see a I see a tire on there, and I'm not used to seeing a tire on a, on a row cleaner. So. Yeah. So we went with a little bit different design for reveal row cleaner. We wanted to take all of the benefits of a standard row unit mounted row cleaner and be able to apply that to our design, but then do none of the harm. So a standard row unit mounted row cleaner is a great tool, but we see we see it send all those vibrations right back through the row unit, right? Uh, we get a lot of that vibration that can cause poor singulation, poor emergence through the row unit. So when we started looking at Reveal, we wanted to be able to manage that tying engagement and then also get that off the row unit. So you can see with Reveal, we've installed this internal gauge wheel, and that allows us to manage that tying engagement through this T-handle up front. So we have four different settings there that allows you to either float these wheels across the top of the ground for some conventional till situations, but then also really get aggressive if a guy's really hunting for moisture and he actually wants to put that row unit below the soil surface, we can do that as well. We had a gentleman in Texas who was actually digging about a four inch trench just hunting for moisture. He was able to get through that and we didn't see any um, 
any downfall to what the row cleaner was doing at that point. Okay. So you still have adjustability from the cab too as far as lifting and raising the row cleaner then? Absolutely. So there's two airbags installed on this unit. We have a lift bag and a down bag that can be uh, managed in the cab with our standard row cleaner control module, uh, our standard manual controller for clean sweep that we can reuse for the reveal row cleaner or we can use the Gen 3 um, row cleaner control module as well. Okay. Is it ISO compatible or does it have to run through a 2020? Or? So the great thing about this product is it's a completely standalone mechanical product. We okay. don't actually need any control for that. So our standard old style clean sweep manual controller is just a regulator with a knob on yeah. it. And you can manage that pressure through the knob to give you a net lift or a net down pressure. So we actually don't need, we don't care what it goes on. You can put it on an 87 VW bug if you want, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so with this unit design, the standard row unit is gonna be mounted right here. And basically the theory going to this route is with it, with it mounted here, that's going to be affecting the whole the balance of the row unit, basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so when we, when we removed that for the row unit, we had to start thinking about how we're going to attach this to the row. So probably our safest option from a compatibility standpoint is to actually use these parallel arm mounts. You can see on the Laser Pro row unit, we have to actually mount to this setback bracket. But on a standard row unit that has standard parallel arms, you can actually reuse these two bolts here. Or we offer a 7x7 seven seven plate that actually kind of grips and holds that bar. Or we have some other options uh, as far as setbacks and things like that. So I guess one way I kind of think of it, I'm looking at like a, like a barrel. You wouldn't want to attach something to the barrel of a rifle because you're going to be affecting the actual same concept here. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate the appreciate you explaining to us, man. Thanks for having me. So walking through the farm show, we ran into the May West guys. and. We have one of these things. How do you like that, Brian? That thing works awesome. So I plugged the grain, or they plugged the grain filter, plugged the air filter on our combine doing beans, uh, completely plugged. Tried to blow it out enough just to keep going. Alarm was going off all night. Next morning we blew it out with that, and it's been completely fine ever since. Works great. Pretty slick idea. It doesn't matter if you're putting in 200 plus PSI here. You're only going to get the 45 PSI out here. Yep. Not going to harm your, your filter. Yeah, because you can blow the filter apart. You know I mean? without, Absolutely. You know. yep. Regular regular spray nozzle put on the end of your air hose, you will damage that filter. Yep. So, the way it's designed, it's not going to do any damage. And most importantly, it's going to save a lot of money in fuel. Well, yeah, um, but for sure. And filters aren't cheap. Filters are not cheap. I mean, it doesn't take very long to pay for this thing. Right. A couple air filters and yep. it's pretty well there. Yep. A few times of uh, utilizing it, you've got that paid for. Yep. Brian, this is our all new G4 tractor stock stompers. We follow the same idea as our G4s and our corn heads, and we implemented that on our tractor stompers. Okay. We got rid of that big metal shoe, and we went with our molded G4 shoe on a torsion unit. So the idea is save tire wear, then I'm guessing? Save tire wear on the tractors. Yeah. So, or track wear, I guess, in that application yep. right there. Okay. So you see a lot of guys run these on grain carts or then or um, tillage the, tractors or both? Yep, both of them. They're extremely uh, popular with no-till, strip-till, min-till uh, yeah. folks out there. Uh, planter tractors, you know, protecting those tires, protecting those tracks. Yep. So nice thing about it, it's all hydraulically run. Okay, so, so you, you can get, raise it out of the way if you yep, need to. Yep, you though. get your head lens, you're spinning around, you can raise that up hydraulically. Okay, okay. So is it pretty universal as far as mounting applications then? Or? The, depending on model of head will depend on what head mount bracket you're going to use and that's going to bolt right on the main frame of your the front end of the track. Okay. All right, well, I appreciate you showing around some of the some of the May West products. Uh, look forward to definitely going to be placing an order here pretty soon, I think. So. Uh, it's going to be fun working with you, Brian. Yeah. We have a lot of good products. All right, well, I appreciate it. All right, thank you. So one last stop before we head home, I wanted to look at the Underfirth Nutramax. Am I saying that right, Sean? That's right, Underfirth Nutramax. So this is a side dress bar, but this one's also, is this one equipped with the Ys too? It's got dual delivery, okay. so we can put fertilizer in the row, uh, excuse me, with the colder, and then we can dribble 28 next to the plant okay. roots as well. Okay. Okay. So with that, are you doing a split in the application in half, or can you individually adjust where you're putting how much? Um, that's right. You can select. Um, a lot of guys do two thirds with the colder and a third with the okay. uh, hoses. Yep. Uh, it gives the corn a, a quick boost. Right. And then it's right some. on the roots, yeah. and then the the rest of the base is injected into the soil with the colder. 
So it's very popular and does a nice job. Yep. So see, we got 2,600 gallon tanks, is that right? That's right. And then tracks to keep it afloat. So yep. what, what kind of acres an hour are people doing with these? Like what kind of mile an hour are you able to run? Um, you see a lot of guys, you know, in that seven mile an hour range. So, okay. you know, you hear- so you're, you're covering some dirt. You hear output of day, output of acres per day. You know, there's you know, seven, 800 acres, seems like it's attainable. Okay. So, you know, the beauty of it is 2,600 gallons takes a yep. half of a semi load or a lot of tender trucks hold, you know, 2,500. Yep. So we can take the whole load. Uh, the equalizer tracks have a nice footprint on the soil so we don't, you know, we're not compacting the soil greatly. These are the equalizer style tracks so they, they, they actually oscillate side to side. Yeah, same thing we're running on most of the grain carts now. That's right. right. Yep. yep. Well, it looks like an animal of a side dress bar. That's right. So is it running through a Raven controller then, or what's, how are you uh, controlling your product? It's standard with a Raven okay. rate control, and, you know, if a customer has a, you know, Green Star rate controller, that, that can plug and play as well. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I appreciate it, Sean. Yes, sir. Are you guys the famous YouTubers? <laughs> I thought you were. No. So that's it for us, folks. We have left. We are heading back. We have sore feet, sore legs, and lots of work to do. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope everyone had a good and safe time at the farm show. And we'll see you in the next one.